Today we're going to talk about um, uh, matchmaking events and how to get true value out of matchmaking events. This is really important to me because the SBA and, and PTAX and others, uh, agencies, they host a lot of events where there's matchmaking involved. And sometimes we don't get the value out of the matchmaking event that we would expect to get out of it. And I'm going to provide you some tips on, on how to get that out. So today I want to just talk to you about key questions you should be asking at a matchmaking event. You know, when you go to an event, here are some of the questions you might ask people. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, common pitfalls. And, and the whole point of mentioning a common pitfall is, is to think about how we can avoid that pitfall. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about that. And then I want to go through a strategy in the next 30 minutes about how you can get the value out of your time invested. Whether you're meeting with a government agency point of contact, a, a large prime point of contact, or really anybody else in the industry who's interested in helping you one way or another navigate federal government contracting, um, I want to give you tips on what you can do before the event, during the event, and then after the event to lead to that successful activity of uh, a matchmaking event. Um, what I'm about to talk to you, um, it's on a, uh, a handout that I give. And so this handout provides the tips that I have. And if you want that, put in the comments, hey, please send me the handout for uh, matchmaking events. And I'll remember to send that. If you've, by the way, uh, I get a lot of traffic on these LinkedIn um, live sessions. And I sometimes will say, hey, send me that, you know, send me a request. If I haven't got to you on some of the requests, do two things. One is be patient with me because we've got a lot and I'm trying to get back to you while I do my day job, right? And then the second thing is um, it might have slipped and I'm trying not to miss anything that's coming from you. But if you, you know, if you feel like you've gone a few days and you haven't got what you asked, please don't feel bad about sending me a reminder. Uh, hey, can you send me the cold calling sheet or, or visibility check, whatever it is. If, I'm, if I haven't got back to you in a timely manner, sometimes it might be because it's slipping down below the radar and just feel free to bring it back up. You're not going to, uh, you know, bug me. So, okay. So let's talk about some of the common pitfalls. And I, I just want to zoom in on my thing because I am reading some notes that will give me a little reminder, but um, one of the first pitfalls, and I think this is a government pitfall and a, and an attendee or an industry pitfall is expecting a miracle contact. You know, you're a small business, you do uh, risk management framework, shout out to Kim. Um, and you go to a matchmaking event expecting that the person on the other side is even going to have a clue what RMF is, risk management framework, or um, that they're even actually a person who's in security or software development or whatever that uh, they would go, oh my God, thanks, Kim, you showed up. You, that's exactly what we're looking for. That is not something that happens at an event. If it happens, it's a complete fluke. The same as scratching off a lottery ticket has a winning um, prize on it. That is a complete fluke. Normally, you scratch it off, you throw your dollar away. I mean, you throw your card away. And so it's the same thing here on the government side that you know they're at a matchmaking event or a large prime and you think you're going to get a miracle person on the other side. You're not. Um, many of the businesses who are perhaps uh, farther along that you might want to talk to are busy doing the job and not coming to matchmaking events. So instead of looking at that miracle contact, think about how can I engage the person on the other side of the table and take it to the next relationship? The, the next thing, and by the way, if you got specific questions as I go along to matchmaking, put them down uh, and I'll try to get to them. So the, the next one, and this is a big one to me, is not defining your measurement of success before you even go. Um, from a government's perspective, why are you even sitting at that table, right? But from your perspective as a representative of, of your business and you're trying to get in there and sell, what are you trying to achieve? Are you just trying to go there and hand them a capability statement and talk? Or do you have some desired outcome, uh, a return on investment, if you will, for the time you spent, sometimes even money that you spend to get to an event? Um, you know, just write down, what, what do I want to get out of this? I want to get a follow-up meeting or I want to get an introduction to somebody. Whatever it is, if you have a measurement, a measurement of success, then the things you do will drive towards that measurement. Uh, the next common pitfall, and I got five of them. So the third one here is not doing your homework. Uh, frankly, going to an event and just walking in and saying, hi, you know, I'm Neil from Small Business USA. Uh, here's my capability statement. What you want to do is be looking at who's showing up. If it's Department of Homeland Security, maybe this matchmaking event, they're focusing more on CBP and FEMA or something, right? 
And so the people who are going to be there are there. Well, understanding who's going to be there is part of your research and then understanding a little bit about their organization that will help towards your measurement of success questions, right? So if you do your um, advanced research, you might be able to reference a strategic document that just got released. Hey, I was reading your strategic document about FEMA and I saw this. How can I learn more? You know, like, so because I had research, I have questions. Um, <laughs> so some of you are coming in and you're called LinkedIn users. So I need you to make sure you, uh, if you ask for the uh, matchmaking event, put that in, put your name and say, this is, this is Joe. Okay. The other one, and this is um, uh, one that I've just gotten good at with sales of it not happening to me, but a common pitfall is letting other people control the discussion of the meeting. You've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a matchmaking session. The last thing you need is to sit in front of a an, uh, an agency representative who just basically vomits content about their agency. And it, it literally is, uh, that's a perfect word for it because it's that helpful and that attractive to me. I don't need to sit down and have you tell me about what I could find out on the web. You know, hey, we do this and that, you know, our top 10 makes are this, it's like, who cares? Those are not helpful to me as a small business owner or a salesperson. And it's really not helpful to the government to be spewing that information, right? But if you sit down and you have a transition that goes from, hello, I know your time's really busy today. Can I tell you what I'm hoping to get out of this meeting? I've done a ton of research about your agency. I understand the organizations. I've read your strategic documents. What I would like is this, this, and this in the next couple of minutes. Does that sound fine? And if you don't do this, it'll take you a little bit of time to get used to it, but it's just a process and a process is basically made up of skill sets. And so this is a skill that you have to learn to control the meeting. That person on the other side would probably really appreciate the fact that you're controlling the meeting because they know they're just spewing out agency information because sometimes they really get people who sit down and haven't even registered in SAM. So it's tough on them. And if you understand it's tough on them, controlling the meeting is not a control freak kind of thing, but it's more of a disciplined type thing. Um, so the, the next tip and the last one I had for um, common pitfalls is ignoring the opportunity to meet new people. So this means uh, we go to a matchmaking event, we might sit down and talk to the people on the other side and that's fine, right? That's normal and we see that. But you've got all these potential teaming partners out there or just professional new friendships that they might uh, be able to get you into DHS, you might be able to get them into DOD and you just begin to find um, people who are out there. One of the things that larges actually do, even though they're huge competitors with each other, they work very closely as an industry, like defense industry at the large prime level, they work very closely and together. You, if you look um, at any event, if you look online, you see them talking, they're constantly coming together. Of course they compete when it's time to compete, but otherwise they're pushing to drive the government where they want the, to drive the government. They're pushing to drive opportunities to full and open. Smalls, we're not as good at that. We think we need to protect everything and you really don't. There's so many people there who are willing to help you if you just ask for help. And one of the best ways to ask for help is to offer help, right? That's, you know, introduce yourself, take a second to get to know them and make a point. You can't build a full relationship here, but make a point of saying, hey, it sounds like there's some synergy, same agency or similar type of work. How about we follow up? And then you can move on and talk to people. One, one last thing about that. If you're the person that somebody's trying to meet, a great tip, if you're standing there with your, your, uh, your wingman or somebody you might bring to an event, um, when you talk, sometimes you talk like this face to face spread yourself like this. And so you're one person's kind of spreading out to the right. The other person's spreading to the left and you're still talking, but that's body language that says, come on into our circle. We're happy to add another person to the circle. And as the circle gets bigger, always make sure there's this inviting room compared to closing it into a click. For those of us who are a little nervous or newer to an event, we see these little clicks and we feel afraid to go over to you. Even if you actually are willing to talk with us, if your body language is saying no, then that's all I see. I don't see that you're super nice and willing to talk to me. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I wanted to give you uh, just a, a couple of quick tips about before the event that you can do. And so I've got five for that, six at the event, and um, a handful after uh, after the event, after you walk away. Um, depending on the time, right? I'm tight on time and I always pay attention to your time. If I don't get through it all, I do have this sheet. I'd be happy to hand it out. But one of the things you need to do before you go to an event is you really need to have realistic expectations. You're not going there to get a contract. 
you're really not even going there to establish a relationship. You're going there to meet people, perhaps introduce your company in a way that uh, they hear about you for the first time. But if you're meeting somebody on the other side of the table, you, you need to know that you will have to follow up with them, have a meeting, et cetera. So if, if your real ex, realistic expectations are more along the lines of getting a follow-up meeting compared to um, getting a win, then, then you'll be able to have a good meeting. Um, you have uh, a cap you know you have this ability to hand me a capability statement, some other stuff. Before the event, make sure you have a practiced uh, like five to 15 second pitch. People sometimes call it an elevator pitch or a hook even. Um, and the idea is uh, what I like it to be more than a hook or, a, or an elevator pitch is I just like it to be the first 15 seconds that I'm going to talk to be memorized. And then I go from there. If something straightforward, like, hey, I'm Neil McDonald from the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. I, I wrote some notes down about what I wanted to ask you. Do you mind if I go over those? Something like that. Or maybe I cut that off a little bit and say, you know, hi to them. And then I move on to my next few minutes. But having that first 15 seconds makes you feel calm and a little bit more in control of yourself, which makes it easier to have a good meeting with whoever's on the other side of the table, whether they're super friendly or a little bit uh, you know, standoffish because they got a toothache. Um, having that memorized will make it easier for you. All right. The next one is um, update your DSBS profile. Whether you've been in business for 20 years or 20, 20 days, you're still going to get people on the other side saying, well, have you updated? Are you registered in SAM? You know, do you have a bank account? Do you have a capability statement? And what I've learned as an experienced small business owner, and you might keep this in mind as a um, uh, a company, you know, as a representative of a company that's squared away already or procurement ready, is they're going to ask you questions. Just be ready to say it, you know, hey, our DSBS profile is very thorough. You can check us out there. And um, when you go into our uh, DSBS profile, you see it matches our capability statement. Having those two up to date and fresh for 2022, for example, and perhaps a little bit more geared towards DHS and FEMA, if that's where you're going, I don't need you to work hard on uh, you know a ton of different capability statements, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Like if you have past performances and one of them's at DHS or FEMA, you can slide that up on your capability statement to the first row of your past performances and then switch it to the Navy past performance. If you don't have past performance, you just use something that's relevant that you might think matters to FEMA, whoever. Fourth tip is to research the agency's opportunities. Uh, whether you want to just go in like I do sometimes and research the agency or talk to them about their agency, they're still going to ask you about an opportunity. So make sure you look at the opportunities that are on FBO or FBO. That's how old my tips are um, on SAM or on FPDS or on their forecast. If you're going to a FEMA event or DHS event, it shouldn't take you long, a couple hours to look in, see what opportunities exist right now that might fit into your space. Um, and something to go along with that in SAM is you can see if there's an industry uh, day that had happened recently slides, because if you can reference these things, it's a way to control the conversation to say, I've looked at this stuff, but my questions are here. So in their mind, they go, okay, they're, they're doing the homework. I get so many people who don't do my homework, but you have done your homework. I'll talk to you. So the fifth one that I'm looking at is, um, related to finding out who's uh, registered. And, and sometimes you'll get this, sometimes you won't. But reach out to the government and ask them, hey, who's registered for this event? I'd like to be able to try to um, identify teaming partners. And um, one thing you can tell them, by the way, is just keep telling them over and over again, I'm happy if you share my information. But if you find out who's there, you can reach out to them directly via email or phone or LinkedIn and say, hey, Neil, I know you're going to be out there. I'd love to connect with you and just say hi. We haven't met each other before. It's a quick way to find your competitors. And if you haven't heard that term, right, competitors are people, it's companies that sometimes you compete with and sometimes you team with. That's just how all of us are in the GovCon space. Some, some days we're working together and some days we're competing against each other. And, 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 uh, and that's fine. And, and meet matchmaking events, if you look to find out who they are before you go there, it gives you a chance to get more value out of the event. So let me move to uh, six tips for when you're at the event. And um, I'm not going to share this now because I'll probably run out of time, but I, on my um, handout here that you can just ask me in the uh, chat to, to send to you, um, I have, I think, six or seven questions 
that are pretty good questions you could wrap into um, your preparation for when you go out to an event. So, um, you know, at the top of the sheet, I think I have, well, I have five questions there, um, five key questions to ask when you're out there. Okay, so at the event though, here's what I uh, want you to be thinking about and doing. Uh, one is following a meeting plan. So when you get out there, make sure you have some sort of plan. If you've got a 10, 15 minute window, you need to think to yourself, two minutes max for chit chat. And then I wanna get right into the meet and I want at least a minute of I'm done talking, let me stand up so that you're respecting their time. So if you've done that, you've got three minutes off your 15 minute, you got 12 minutes. 12 minutes is not a lot of time. And so what I would do is introduce myself in a, in a single minute, you know, the minutes a long time in this case, but a one minute introduction of the company, I would hand them the capability statement and say, you know, hey, we're not gonna be able to cover this all now, but a quick overview of my company um, is that we focus on SharePoint solutions for the government, in particular, migration, software development, and um, infrastructure management, network administration. So these three things are the space we play in, and we focus really tightly on our core competency of Microsoft SharePoint. And I will say SharePoint multiple times because I'm trying to drive into their head, oh, that was that SharePoint company, you know, and you want the same thing for yourself. You want them to, when you're standing up, they go, okay, I'll remember you, you're the uh, risk management framework, the RMF people, got it. I will not say that I'm a, a SDVO or an 8A or woman-owned firm, hub zone firm, because that'll be on my capability statement in a logo right at the top. And when they look, they will circle it. They'll, they're looking for things. They're looking for NAICS code and other stuff. So when you have a, a plan about what you'll say, it makes it easier. So following that plan, a quick introduction, and then, hey, what I... What I'd like to do is to learn what office is doing this type of work, or I have found that this office seems to be doing this type of work. How can I how can I work with you to get an introduction into that office? So, because uh, I'm not pursuing any opportunity, what I want to do is understand their goals and objectives over the next couple of years, so we can align our services and offerings around that. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how I go into it. If if you haven't seen, I've got a um, an event I did a while ago that was on cold calling or, or matchmaking. And you'll see how I talk about spin questions, this right way of asking questions. Um, one of the things I love to do when I go to an event, so this is my second tip on at the event, is to, to tell them I wrote down five questions, right? I tell them right there, I wrote these questions down in preparation and I make sure they can see my call plan. I don't give it to them. I don't want them to control the meeting. But when I do that, they go, oh my God, this guy's totally pre prepared. Yeah, let's go ahead. And I've done this where I've asked three questions. They're like, hey, you still got two more. What are they really quick? And I'm like, okay, let's go. They they like seeing that um, I've laid out a plan and they want to help follow that plan with me. Uh, it makes it easy for them to, to give me what they wanted to, which was help, right? They're there to help us. And so they'll they'll do that. Um, the One of the other things that people sometimes mess up is hearing somebody's name and uh, contact information and then not clarifying it. And so my tip is, as they're talking, if they say their name, pause them. If they don't give you a card, pause and say, could you spell that, please? Right. I was having a conversation with somebody today about um, this. When I'm asking you for clarification on your name, it's not disrespectful. It's completely respectful because I want to make sure I get it correctly. Plus, you really don't want to miss the phone number and the um, email address up, things like that. Um, an another one that's really important is if you're asking a question, this tip number four, Balance your listening with the talking. Um, and, and in this particular case, just because I wrote the questions down doesn't mean I'm just going to try to push through them. I'm writing these questions down in the order of priority so that I can try to hear what they say. If they start talking, then I want to let them roll for a second because sometimes I'll get a gem out of it. So just uh, do that whole thing about two ears, one mouth, and uh, you want to listen twice as much as you talk. The fifth tip is be efficient with your time. And so Make sure you're you're asking the questions, you're looking at it and being a little, this is just sales skill sets that I'm teaching you, but looking at your cheat, and not, not your cheat sheet, but your call plan, your meeting plan for when you're sitting down and check off each question in almost a little bit of an exaggerate, exaggerated way because they're sitting three feet away from you and they will see you checking it off and they, like you, will feel a sense of accomplishment with this 15 minute session. So go ahead and do that, but make sure you're also writing notes down. Notes provide two huge values. One is obviously it'll show, uh, tell you what 
um, you learn later on. But the uh, the other thing is it shows respect to the person who's talking. You came there to get information. They're sharing information. When they see you writing it down, they're like, oh, thank you. Somebody who's not just ask me a question and then not caring enough to remember it. So they'll appreciate it. And it's it's one of those things that kind of lead to it. Um, and then the last thing at the event, I said this earlier about paying attention, but uh, when there's downtime, when you're standing there outside the hallway waiting to go in for the next round and you're standing there 15 minutes, don't stand in the hallway. And I've been guilty of this sometimes where I'm just looking at my phone or something else. You are there and you're paying yourself to be there to meet people. Talk to the person across from you and the person over there and the person over there. And it doesn't matter whether you're a construction person and they're IT or, or you're in cyber and they're in software development or whatever. It doesn't matter because you both are trying to sell to this agency or to sell to the federal government. Making more professional friends in here is a great thing to do. And especially if you see these people at event after event after event, pretty soon it starts becoming pretty uh, uh, common with everybody. Okay. I'm going to, uh, you know, to the to the detriment of, of myself a little bit on talking slow, I'm going to speed up for the last part because I want to give you these four tips for after the event. Um, the last one is, uh, so when you come out of an event, you want to make sure you're doing things correctly. So send an initial follow-up email the next day saying, here's what we talked about. You can send an email that same day that says, thank you. But wait one day and send a follow-up saying, hey, Joe, thanks a lot for talking with me. This is what I heard. I really appreciate it. I'm going to digest this for a couple of days and follow back up. This is relationship building or touching and engagement. It spreads it out. Um, when you're sitting at the table and or afterwards, you can ask them if it's all right to connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, this is really helpful for people who are actually on LinkedIn. You'll be able to be engaged. Anybody who's on LinkedIn will say yes. So connect with them on LinkedIn. And then um, follow up with them. If they told you, hey, go look at this document or go look at this place, follow back up individually on this one topic and say, hey, um, Joe, you told me to go look at the strategic document for HHS. And I found it was just so thorough. I really appreciated you pointing me out to it. Um, I saw a lot of stuff that related to what I'm doing. So I think that's awesome. Um, the other thing is uh, in your when you're talking to them at an event, tell them you'll send your capability statement electronically. We'll wait four days and then send it to them. Let them get um, out of the event and all those capability statements they had. And you can follow up four business days later. And if you have sent them an email, if you have connected on LinkedIn, well, you're engaging them. And now you're sending that electronic capability statement. It comes to the top of their box and it's not a piece of paper on their desk that they just came back with. So that's an important one. And then one of the last things I like to do as, a, as especially if you're newer to this agency, is ask them what advice they have on your capability statement to make it more helpful to, to their um, colleagues throughout the agency, FEMA or uh, TSA, for example. So asking them for some suggestions, they might say, well, you know, you're not putting this information in the way that we like to see it. Put it this way. Sounds cool. And now you create a unique capability statement for them. They're not going to change it a lot, but uh, like I like to put NAICS codes with just the code, not the name. So they might say, Put the name on it. We really like the name. It's like, all right, I'll go throw the name on it and throw it back. And they're happy. And it's a way to just come out of that matchmaking event, having put myself and my company in their memory a little bit more than I would have if I didn't prepare. So um, I'm wrapping up on time. I want to look back at uh, the chat really quick to see if there's um, questions. If you'd like a copy of this handout that I have on uh, how to prepare and have success at a matchmaking event, let me know, put a comment in the chat right now while we're live that just says, please send me the handout for um, matchmaking events. If you're watching this on YouTube or uh, LinkedIn replay our website or watching it, uh, listen to it on podcast, wherever you're at, put a um, comment in if you want me to send it to you and we'll send it to you. Uh, that particular one, we should be able to get out the next day or two because it's, it's sitting by. I just have to respond to everybody. Uh, if you like this content, by the way, give it a thumbs up. If you know people who are going to a matchmaking event, you might want to tag them just uh, at Neil McDonald or at Joe Jones. Um, tag them in the comments so that they can hear about this matchmaking LinkedIn Live that I did and they can come back and uh, watch the replay. Um, okay, I think we're good on there. I wanted to remind you, if you haven't uh, already done this, go sign up for the webinar I'm doing tomorrow. Tomorrow's webinar is on... Um, uh, finding and build or starting and building relationships that lead to federal revenue. 
So it feeds right into what we just talked about today, but that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, so go, go ahead and sign up for that. And um, the last thing is, if you've got topics that you'd like me to expand on LinkedIn, feel free to drop me a note, let me know, because some of these topics you'll see me doing this, this coming week are coming from people just like you who have asked me specific questions. You know, hey, I run into this problem. And those are my favorite topics to do because I know I'm addressing a, you know, a current challenge that's top of mind. So if I could do that for you, I'd love to do that. I'm Neil McDonald reminding you that government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. I'll see you next time.